Hello ladies and gentlemen and penguins, welcome to my review of Kubuntu 1804 which is codenamed Bionic Beaver. This is a long-term support release of Kubuntu which is supported for 3 years and not the 5 years that normal Ubuntu is supported for. For once on the Kubuntu release schedule they've actually managed to get the latest and greatest KDE desktop. Here we have version 4.12.4, which at time of recording is the latest one. And even if it's not the latest in a few months time you can add the Kubuntu backports repository which I've been using in version 17.10 and I have to say they've kept it pretty well up to date. Not quite as up to date as KD Neon but pretty close, pretty close. Oh, and a bit behind you Arch users as well but yes 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 that's a different distribution entirely and more on a bleeding edge. Now first off I will mention that this is not the standard layout of the Kubuntu KD desktop. The Latte dock above me there is a feature I've added to it, purely because it's available in the repositories now, so why not try it out? And it's a cute base dock, so yep, all the more reason to go for it. Kubuntu 18.04 comes with the Linux kernel 4.15.0, Mesa 18.0, and the NVIDIA 390 graphics drivers available for install. One thing immediately noticeable on theming is that there's more of the Breeze Dark theme used now in Kubuntu, although they've actually created their own custom theme, but it's more of a mixture of the Breeze Dark and Breeze Light theming. So you've got the Breeze Dark in the panel and application launcher here, and more of the Breeze Light theming in the applications. It is a nice enough mixture and I don't really have anything against it. The default display server remains at Xorg. In fact, if you want to try out the Wayland display server, you actually have to install the package, which is the Plasma Workspace Wayland. Reading through the documentation, they actually thoroughly discourage the use of Wayland at this point, which given that it's a long-term support release, I suppose that's more reasonable. However, I didn't think Wayland was that much of an issue now on KTE. Although to be fair, I haven't really tried Wayland, seeing as I have an NVIDIA graphics card and use the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Although it's not a case that it flat out won't work anymore with Wayland, I believe parts of it have now started to work. But yes, I can see their decision for a long term support release because they want the most stable release of Kubuntu that they can possibly get. You can now install Snap packages and Flatpak packages as well in the Discover Software Center. Although, once again, you actually have to install the package to make that happen, and that is the Plasma Discover Snap backend. But upon installing it, we do have the ability to search for Snap packages. I tried out two of them on the system. The first package, well, let's say it's called YTDL. Yep, get an error message. I uh, tried a quick Googling, didn't see any immediate answers. The second package I tried was SuperTuxCart, which works absolutely fine. As I mentioned, I installed this Latte doc, and I've just put it across the side of the screen. And I installed this from the standard application repositories. It's not something I've really played around with before, so it was just quite an interesting thing I thought I would try out. Yeah. Quite a few various different configurations we can do with it. So I may play around with that more in the future. In terms of applications on here, well hang on a minute, let's just change the layout because we do have quite a lot of flexibility in choosing just the simple alternatives here or going for more of a very specific customization where you can make KD into whatever you want really. It's a very flexible desktop or you can just pick it up and use it. So I'm just going to go for the application dashboard. In fact, something I mentioned first before I go through the applications is that there's a minimal install option available in Kubuntu. Yes, the minimal installer uses about 600 meg less of disk space and about 20 megabytes less of RAM. And it comes with a really minimal selection of applications. Here you get a browser, image viewer, a few KDE utilities, and I think it has VLC as well. Yes, it does. So no office and no email applications. Switching back across the full system installer, well just a quick glance through and you can see yeah, there's a few more applications installed. Some of these I've installed myself like Latte, Falcon and SuperTuxCart. One change from the previous long term support release of Kubuntu is that Cantata is now the default music player. I believe that Amarok hadn't been updated for quite a long time and was still based on Qt4 so they switched across to a Qt5 music player. Falcon is a KDE web browser which was formerly known as Kubzilla. It uses the Blink engine from the Chromium project. I tried this out a while back as a Snap based application because I quite liked the idea of running a browser in a sandbox. But now it is available in the standard system repositories which lacks the sandboxing features of the Snap applications. 
although it does give you a more seamless integration into the standard Plasma desktop environment. Firefox is a default web browser. I notice it's got a few extras here like Kmail and Ktorrent pre-installed. Under multimedia, VLC is the media player. Office has the full suite of LibreOffice pre-installed. Well, despite using the system for quite a while, the memory usage hasn't really crept up much overall. However, I think that KD Neon does use slightly less memory. Well, to add a couple more things to this review, and these are KD specific features, but if you press Control Escape, you do get a system activity monitor and it does show you the memory usage of each application. As well as a little graph on the CPU usage, but since my system isn't doing anything particularly much at the moment, I can't really see that graph. The Alton F2 K runner feature does allow you to install applications directly from here. So if I was to type something like ink, so inkscape, it takes me directly across to Discover Software Center and allows me to go straight to the install. As well as there being numerous other features here, and there's another one, and for example, we have the calculator. Plasma vaults are now pre-installed. So what this does, it creates an encrypted folder under your home folder, which only allows the contents to become visible once you have unlocked the vault. It's quite a nice feature to have on a multi-user system. What I absolutely love about KDE is the flexibility, speed and responsiveness of it. Although it may have a slightly longer boot up time compared to some of our desktop environments, it is certainly not sluggish once it is up and running. And that was a look at Kubuntu 18.04. So overall I'm really impressed with this release and I actually look forward to replacing my version of Kubuntu 17.10 with 18.04. Now, whether I'll go for KD Neon is another matter, but let's say for now, I'm impressed with Kubuntu 18.04. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.